Now I have a passion for adding water holes to a property. Uh, in particular when you have deer that are bedded dry and they're on the way to food, passing through water and over to evening destination fields. Uh, maybe in, be in between some bedding areas where you have bedding areas back here, back there, great cruising routes. That being said, I really love to hide my water holes. I know you probably even have a hard time seeing that we have a three foot by four foot, 30 inch deep water hole dug into the ground right here. And it holds about 110 gallons of, of water. Several occasions, we're hunting uh, Southwest Wisconsin. I've had reports from clients and I've seen it myself in Michigan and Minnesota, Pennsylvania, New York, states that have a high hunter population, deer just don't like anything unnatural. And so what we've had happen around here, we've actually, we began by sticking these right on top of the ground. That works in some locations, but around here, we've seen a real adverse reaction to the local does, for example. Let's say we stick a water hole out in September, um, it takes them till the middle of October to get used to it. And then when you have a mature buck that comes through the area and he sees that big black shape sitting there, he'll completely avoid it, uh, might even run. I've had a herd of deer even come in to where um, the doe stops, stared at that water hole, and I'm in my stand. It's early October. It's not even time of the rut, and there's nice buck, small buck, and about 10, 12 deer where they're being pushed by from dogs um, about from probably three-quarter mile away. They went all the way down the hollow and over. And as soon as those does saw that tank, they all stopped and stared at it. Now, these are does that are not local does. They're from a half mile, three-quarters of a mile away. They didn't like it, and so that buck nice buck, one I would have liked to have uh, taken a shot at with the bow. He hung up about 70, 80 yards back and he watched what those does were doing. Well, those does skirted all the way around the water tank and then they ran. And then he ran the opposite direction. Bottom line, I didn't get an opportunity and that water hole, had it not been there, it probably would have, uh, it, it probably cost me from getting an opportunity with that buck at that time. Really like to bury these. Like to make it look non-invasive, just look like a puddle in the woods. And if you can see this, this water hole has been installed the way we like it. We've even sculpted it all the way around so that it's almost like a bowl surrounding this water hole so we can collect water into it. And again, this water hole ends up being the bottom of the puddle, basically. There's times where some of our water holes are so full that you can't even see the plastic rim around it. That's how buried they are. So I'd like you to consider that. You know, if you're in a low hunter density state like Iowa, Kansas, um, you can put a 275 gallon stock tank right in the middle of your food plot. They'll probably hit it during the daylight every day. They're just not that wary of unnatural shapes. But when you get into an area where there's 10 times more hunters, literally 10 times to 20 times more hunters in the woods and, um, and deer are used to picking up things, even a trail camera on a tree, let alone a 110 gallon tank on the ground, you'll find yourself, if you can bury these tanks, get them into the ground, it takes a little bit of work but uh, you'll, find that, uh, you'll find that the deer rarely, if ever, negatively react to them, even in a high hunter pressure state. And that'll keep your lands, your stands, a lot more stress-free. And when you can have stress-free hunting grounds, you can have an incredible level of success in the fall.